there's two other issues with CrossFit that are out of this solar system stupid. Hi, my name is John Jakebush. I'm a doctor of biomedical engineering, which gives me a unique perspective uh, to comment on all sorts of things. Today, I'm going to talk about a controversial subject, uh, which probably is less controversial than it was three or four years ago. Uh, I want to talk about CrossFit and why you really want to avoid CrossFit, if uh, depending on your goals. However, if your goal is competing at the CrossFit Games, you kind of have to do CrossFit. So, I want to. I want to just unwind and look at some of the little aspects of CrossFit that tend to be problematic on a very basic level. Now, there's a lot of different things going on in CrossFit. In the promise of CrossFit, in, especially in the beginning, was you're going to take an athlete and they're going to be well-rounded. So the idea that, oh, you don't want to be like a bodybuilder because all they can do is lift heavy stuff, but they can't run. No, that's their assertion. And also it's not true, but that's just what they said. I've met a lot of bodybuilders that can sprint incredibly fast. I've not met a lot of bodybuilders that can run marathons. There's a lot of reasons for that. Mostly because when you have blood pumping to that amount of musculature, you're, you're going to compromise your endurance. So the idea of having a well-rounded athlete that can run distances, also run sprints, also lift heavy weights, also do explosive calisthenics, also do explosive high repetition powerlifting moves, you're going in so many different directions from the perspective of adaptations of the body that you're actually not going to improve much because a lot of these stimuli are conflicting with each other. So like for example, if you take an individual and they're doing strength training, like the kind of things that we talk about on this channel all the time, you can build an amazing physique. But then as soon as you go out and start running distance, your, so your, your weight training is upregulating testosterone and growth hormone. When you start running, you're downregulating testosterone and growth hormone and upregulating cortisol. So cortisol, a lot of people don't know this, but it really has two functions. It's a stress hormone and it's not a bad hormone. That this is one thing that I constantly bump into. A lot of people think cortisol is bad. No, cortisol is your body's way of stopping you from doing something that is you know, maybe not, not optimal. It, but it's also not bad. It's like, for example, when you get up out of bed in the morning, cortisol goes up. It doesn't mean getting out of bed is bad for you. It means that it's a stress. And when the cortisol level goes down after that, well, then it's not a stress and it didn't impede your physical development, brain function, whatever. So there's a lot of confusion on that topic. But when you look at this CrossFit dynamic, really most of the stuff that they're doing cancels out a lot of other stuff that they're doing. So from the rudimentary principles, it doesn't work. I mean, which is why the only way you can tell somebody does CrossFit is they'll probably mention it five times in the first conversation you have with them because there's no way to tell that they work out by looking at them. I mean, that's a little bit of a joke and bodybuilders say that joke all the time, uh, but there's a lot of truth to it too. Uh, not, not, a, not a lot of people have really built much of an impressive physique from CrossFit. And I know somebody will be like, what about some guy? And what about some other guy who won the CrossFit games? Yeah, they all built their bodies doing something else, at least as far as I can tell. And if you want to give me examples and uh, you know, argue with me, you can do that. I probably won't look them up because I don't really care. It's just dumb. Now here is the, the there's two other issues with CrossFit that are like out of this solar system, stupid. Number one is powerlifting movements outside of one repetition. So when you go to a powerlifting meet, somebody's doing, or, or an Olympic weightlifting meet, which is different lifts, they do one repetition. 
Now, the reason they do one repetition is these movements are highly technical, very difficult to pull off. And a lot of things are going on. They're multi-joint. You have to be able to balance the weight through your feet, getting the load in the right part of your feet at the right moment to complete the movement. So each one of these movements is as complicated as a golf swing. Remember golf swing. Now imagine somebody has you, instead of practicing a high quality golf swing, they're gonna have you do 50 golf swings in two minutes. Do you think you're gonna, your 50 golf swings are gonna look good if you do that? Or are you gonna break form to try and match the speed that you're being asked to perform these? Well, of course, you're going to break form to perform these movements under the time. And when you break form and you're twisting your back, it's just a recipe for disaster. You're going to get injured. When CrossFit became popular in the United Kingdom, uh, I was doing research over there at the time on my, my series of medical devices that are found at OsteoStrong clinics. I talked to some physicians in the United Kingdom and there's, there's an article I'll, I'll put up, but they were telling me the same stuff that's in there. They had seen hip reconstruction surgeries. The need for those had gone up 600% with the British population since the introduction of CrossFit. And I said, so is are, are CrossFitters just encouraging people to do terrible things or, or is this just all happening at CrossFit gyms? The physicians, the, they were orthopedic surgeons, they said, this is all happening at CrossFit gyms. So highly technical movements that are designed for one repetition, you really don't want to do like 50 of those in a row or two of those in a row. You want to get them right, if that's what you're doing and that's your sport, and perfect the one repetition. Because the idea of perfecting the one repetition has to do with recruiting more muscle and using momentum to pull off a, a bigger lift. And a, an, another example, which I talk about uh, a little bit in some of the Westside Barbell video programming that we have with our, with our program that we built with Westside Barbell, with Olympic weightlifting, bracing is a thing. So like you wanna get the bar over your head and your elbows locked so that it's the bone that is receiving the load not the musculature. You want the least amount of exposure to the musculature of this load so that you can pull it off because it's such a high level of weight. And all of that form and technique and concentration is just thrown in the trash with CrossFit and, and you're encouraged to do it uh, in, I, I would say, an irresponsible manner. Now, all the stuff I just said, it's not necessarily true of all CrossFit instruction because I know guys who own CrossFit gyms who don't let you do the high repetition stuff. They, they treat it more like, okay, today we're doing Olympic lifting. Today we're doing power lifting. Today we're doing sprints. Today we're doing some distance stuff. So they're trying to apply it in a way where they're adhering to the rules of all the sports not for the sake of following the rules, for the sake of safety of the athlete. So if you wanna do CrossFit and the, the group fitness experience seems fun, uh, which, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, done a, I've done a couple of CrossFit classes. I, I sat a couple of things out because I was just like, I'm, I'm just not stupid. Uh, so I, I'm not gonna do that, but I understand the group dynamic. It was fun. It's fun tr doing this with other people. You get more motivated by seeing other people do it. Sometimes somebody breaks your record and you find a new place for motivation because you're like, oh, I'm not letting that guy beat me. So that's all great, but you have to consider all the negative things that I mentioned. And this is also just why CrossFit's not really popular anymore. Hope this helped. And uh, if anything I said made you upset because you're a CrossFit zealot and uh, you mentioned CrossFit five times with every new person you meet, definitely say something in the comments. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna make fun of you because at this point, you're just a diehard and uh, that's cool too, but I don't want you to get injured. 
So you need to take the advice that I gave towards the end of this video, which is start doing it one rep at a time. Throw that stopwatch away and just get the movements right. Getting the movements right is important. Doing it under time is not only not important, it's beyond dumb. I hope this helped and like I said, give me a comment and a thumbs up, thanks. If this video helped you, I want you to subscribe and follow. I'm gonna put out videos on a regular basis. I think they're gonna help a whole lot of people, especially if you're one of those people that doesn't just instantly grow from lifting regular weights. We've got the answer for you.